Is there anyone who wants a present? I can't hear anybody. Fair to, uh, Lockie Wheezy. I saw your hand go up. Down you come, mate. Let's give Lockie a big round of applause. So Lockie wants a present. Lockie, Merry Christmas. Everyone say Merry Christmas, Lockie. Merry Christmas, Lockie. Can you just come here? Can you, are you excited to open this present? Say that again. Yes, very excited. Very excited. He was very excited. Sorry, I didn't realise you were going to keep on talking. You're a bit like me. Uh, what do you think's in there? Uh, I don't know. Are you, don't want to have any guesses? No, none. Think it's going to be massive? Yep. Awesome. All right, well, let's open it up. Who's excited for Lockie? All right, go for it, Lock. Okay. So it's a foam box. It's a little, little esky thing going on. Crack the lid. Might have to crack the lid. Crack the lid of that. There's a lid on it. Ooh. Oh, Lockie, what's going on here? There's another present. Oh, well, lift that one up. Oh, hang on. Is there something else in there? Is there something else in there? Oh, uh, yep. Can you read it out, what it is? Seven day access pass. To Anytime Fitness. Lockie's earned himself a seven day access pass to Anytime Fitness. Hey, you better put that one in the pocket. Maybe you can lend that to your old man. <laughs> Show us your muscles. Hey, he doesn't need that at all. Trav, where are you at? No, I won't. All right, Lockie, keep going. Fantastic. So there's another present in here. Oh, we got, a, we got a cardboard box. Who's excited about what could potentially be in the cardboard box? All right, crack it open. Let's see what's in there. A bell. A bell? What kind of bell? Chocolate bell. Ooh, is that a good gift? Mm-hmm. Do you think it's going to get better? Yes, sir. All right. Well, put that one away. Let's see what else is going on in here. Crack that open. We got another present. Hold it up. Hold it up so everyone can see. Oh, a pink shoebox. What could be in the pink shoebox? Who's feeling very excited to see what's in the pink shoebox? I want Air Jordans. <laughs> if you miss that, we want Air Jordans. I can promise you, you don't have a $250 pair of shoes in there. <laughs> Crack it open. Let's see what's in there. A little bag. Oh, what's in the bag? Wally, Wally. Hold him up. Hold him up. Hold, hold, pull out. What's, what's in there? Right. We got twigs. Snickers. Mars. And Maltesers. Fant is there anything else in there? Is that all? Awesome. Collect all of your presents. Who thinks that's a pretty good gift for Lockie? That's a pretty good score. You better, you better take, now there's a bell there you got to take as well. Take that. Do you want to put it back in your box there? Brilliant. And you got your card. You got your seven day access pass to Anytime Fitness. You're going to need that after you get through all that chocolate. All right. Wonderful. Off you go. Brilliant. Let's give Lockie a big round of applause. Isn't it funny how when we, when we, uh, Think about a gift, the excitement that builds and the anticipation that builds in the, in the opening of that gift. How many of you right now, especially young people, have presents under the tree? How many of you young people, mum and dad has said, do not touch the present under the tree? How many of you have ignored such advice and continued to touch the presents under the tree? Yeah, I would do all of these things. Why is, I wonder why we do that. It's because there's something about when, when there's something hidden, when we know that there's this, this anticipation and excitement because there's a great gift or there's, there's an opportunity for something new, something exciting that's about to come into our life and it fills us with this sense of joy, doesn't it? Fills us with this sense of excitement. It fills us with um, this, this beautiful uh, joy, and I'm just a little worried that a ball's going to hit that Nord, and that would cause us some trouble. Um, 
there's something about an unopened gift that captivates us, isn't there? Something about an unopened gift that captivates us. And I wanna take just two minutes tonight to share a story from the book of Luke where we see in the Christmas story, in the, on the road to Bethlehem, all a part of this journey up to Christmas Day, where an unopened gift brings a beautiful sense of joy and excitement. Go with me to Luke chapter one. And in Luke chapter one, in the 39th verse, don't worry about the chaos, that's all a part of this a night. It says this, At that time, Mary got ready and hurried to a town in the hill country of Judea, where she entered Zechariah's home and greeted Elizabeth. Now, when Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby in her womb, who we will grow to know as John the Baptist, leaped, uh, the, baby, it, the baby leaped in her womb. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. And in a loud voice, she exclaimed, blessed are you among women and blessed is the child you will bear. But why am I so favoured that the mother of my Lord should come to me? As soon as the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the baby in my womb leaped for joy. Blessed is she who has believed that the Lord would fulfil His promises. Everyone say promises to her. I love this passage and this has captivated my attention in the last few weeks. This whole idea that Mary as we heard earlier today, gets the the message from the angels and that she's gonna give birth to the Messiah, the Saviour of the world. But we don't often talk about this moment where she journeys along to Elizabeth's house where there is still in the womb, the future John the Baptist, and upon hearing Mary's greeting, upon sensing an unopened gift, Jesus still like, just just there in Mary's womb. Still nine months from when he'll be born and laid in a manger. But even in that moment, John the Baptist, still himself an unopened gift, leaps for joy. There's an excitement, there is a joy, there is a passion, there is a zeal that comes to a child in a womb when he encounters the presence of the living God, when he encounters Jesus still in Mary's womb. Why is it? Why is that? Why does John leap for joy? And here's a really interesting question. Do we, do we leap for joy? Do we leap for joy at this story, recounting this story? at the thought of Christmas next week and everything that goes with it? Do we leap for joy knowing that God has come to dwell with His people? You see, John the Baptist leaps for joy and then Elizabeth is excited and there's this beautiful moment. Blessed is she, verse 45, who has believed that the Lord would fulfil His promises to her. And if you keep reading, as we go from verse 46, Mary goes into her beautiful song, doesn't she? My soul glorifies the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God, my Saviour. For He has been mindful of the humble state of His servant. From now on, all generations will call me blessed. For the mighty one has done great things for me and holy is His name. His mercy extends to those who fear Him from generation to generation. He has performed mighty deeds with His arm. He has scattered those who are proud in their inmost thoughts. He has brought down rulers from their thrones, but has lifted up the humble. He has filled the hungry with good things, but He has sent the rich away empty. He has helped His servant Israel, remembering to be merciful to Abraham and his descendants forever, just as He promised them. There's this incredible picture that Mary here is singing a song about something that is not yet opened, a gift that is not yet unwrapped, that these things that she's speaking about have not yet come to pass in reality. Are you with me? That all of this is her singing about the promise of God, knowing that God is good on His promises and He will bring these promises to pass just as He was with Moses and just as He was with Abraham. 
And the whole message that she's, she's leaping for joy, she has this excitement is because she knows that the promise of God now in her womb is going to bring hope. Everyone say hope. Not just to Israel, but humanity. Because that was the promise of God to Abraham, wasn't it? That through Abraham, all nations would be blessed. That God was gonna raise up a people that, that through them, He might be proclaimed to the world and then He would raise up a Messiah that would bring the entire world into right relationship with Him. And that promise, that promise is the hope that Israel has held onto. That promise is the hope that Elizabeth has held onto. And that promise is the hope that Mary now sings about. And that promise is still in her womb. And as we come to Christmas, here's what I want us to realise. Yes, we should have joy. We should have excitement. There should be a vitality. There should be like, oh, I can't wait. But not so that we can just unwrap random presents, which are great and it's all good. Not just so we can eat a nice turkey. Not so that we can you know, just spend time with family. All of those things are good, but all of it is about looking forward to a greater promise. All of it is looking forward to the promise that this Jesus who was and is, is to come. That He has come, that He gave His life for humanity, but His promise is that He will come again and He will set all things right. And friends, that gives us hope. And where there is hope, there is joy. And what we have to understand at the moment is that if you are in Christ and you truly know this hope, you will have joy. That does not mean that you won't have sadness. Joy, you can be sad and still filled with joy. But when I look at the world today, what I see is a, a growing, increasingly joyless society. I see an increasingly just not even just depressed or anxious, but you just see people walking around with, with so little joy, so little vibrancy, so little light in the eyes. So many people walking around with heads held low. So many people just focused on the next step and the next step. And I can't help but think it's because they lack hope. Because we are putting our hope in all these things that are temporal. We put our hope in money. We put our hope in in a promotion. We put our hope even in our, in our family that our children maybe will do something significant. Maybe they'll make an AFL team. Maybe they'll be, I don't know. We're constantly putting our hope in things that do not last. And deep down within us, we know that. Deep down within us, the world understands that what I'm holding on to is temporal and will not last. And therefore, I have no hope. And therefore I have no joy. But when you know that He is good on His promise, when you know that the King of all kings and the Lord of all lords who came in a manger, who lived a perfect life, who freely gave His life on a cross, who took His life back up and rose from that grave, who ascended to the right hand of the Father, who sent His Holy Spirit as a testimony to His church that He will come again. When we know that He's coming again, when we know the promise of God, when we know that every tear will be wiped away, that every wrong will be made right in Him, when we know that, we will have joy because He is our hope. Here's my question, do you have hope today? Do you have hope today? Do you have hope this Christmas? Do you have joy? Let's be a joyful people. Let's be a joyful people. Let's be a people who take our eyes off of our circumstance and put our eyes on our hope. Let's be a people who, no matter what's going on, we've got surgery on Wednesday, but our eyes are on the hope we have in Christ and therefore we have joy. You know, there's this beautiful passage in Romans chapter 15, verse 13, which says, may the God of, everyone say it, 
May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in Him so that you may overflow with by the power of His Holy Spirit. My prayer for us at Hills Baptist this Christmas, no matter what's going on in your life, my prayer for you individually, no matter what's going on in your life, no matter what you are facing, is that as you look to the Christmas story, you would see Christ crucified and glorified and coming again. And that would fill your heart with an unshakable hope. And therefore, you would have joy. That is expressed in song and eating and chatting and all that stuff. But all of it points to Him. Amen. Let's stand to our feet as we close in prayer and the band will come up and we will celebrate the King of Kings. Oh, precious Jesus, we love You and we thank You and we worship You. And we pray, Lord, that as we look to this Christmas story, as we look expectantly to the unwrapped present and the unwrapped presence, I pray that You would give us that sense of hope and joy over each person, Lord, the spirit of joy over each person, that deep-seated hope, that hope that is that anchor to the soul, that's not shaken by the winds and the waves of life, but is firm and secure in Your presence. We thank You, Lord Jesus, for all that You have done. We worship You and we glorify You. And we honour You this Christmas season. In Jesus' Name we pray. Amen.